Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. If you are dealing with large data sets and have tables in your Power BI report, you might want to give users a clean way to flip through data page by page. Like you see here on the screen, I have a table and I'm displaying only 10 records from my data set and I have different pages here that I can simply click on these numbers and flip through different pages. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this paginated table using simple DAX. So let's get started with this tutorial. I've added the table to my Power BI report now and you can see that I have a long list of records that are being displayed here on my table. So let's quickly go into the home tab and let's go to the Power Query editor. And in my Power Query editor, I have the orders table. These are the records that are being displayed in my table. And as a first step, let's start by adding in a column here. I would like to add an index column here starting from one. So let's do that. I now have added an index column here. So basically every row will have a unique row number assigned to this particular data set. And let's go back into the home tab and click on apply and close. Once this is done, let's bring in the index column that we just created into our table. And let's change the summarization here of the index column. Let's right click and select don't summarize so that we don't summarize this. And let me sort this by the index number so that we have this sorted in the ascending order. And now it's time for us to create a calculated table which will basically help us identify the number of rows that we have in our table and the number of records that we want to display in this particular paginated table. So let's quickly do that. I have already created a table here. I'm going to show you the DAX and explain how this is going to work. I'm not going to write the DAX here in the interest of time, but I'm going to explain you this in detail so that you understand this better. Let me show you the table here as well so that you understand the generate series here basically is going to create this particular value column for us, which is basically the number of pages that we want to have. The minimum function here is going to define the number of rows that we want to display. For example, like we have 10 here, it is now displaying minimum here as 1 and maximum as 10. For second page, I have 11 and 20. Now, if I change this to 20 and click on confirm, you will see that my minimum is now at one and max is 20. My minimum here is at 21 for page two and max at 40. So I've created this calculated table here. To create a calculated table, all you have to do is head over to the modeling tab and click on new table. When you do that, you get this DAX statement here. This is where you will have to write what I'm going to show you now. So I've named the table here as page table is equals to, and then I'm defining a variable here called total rows. And what I'm doing here is I'm counting the number of rows that I have in my orders table. And I have another variable here called as page size. This is basically defining the number of rows that you want to be displayed in your table. Now, if you change this to 20, then you will have 20 records being displayed on your table. I'm going to change that and show that to you as well. So for now, let's leave this at 10. And then I have another variable here called total pages. And I'm using a ceiling function here basically to help me round off the numbers. And I'm dividing the total number of rows by the page size because I would like to know how many number of pages do I need to add or display in the slicer, right? So it's important for me to do this. So I'm using the ceiling function here. And then the ceiling function requires the second argument here, which is one. And then I have a return statement. In my return statement, basically I'm adding the new columns here. I'm using the function called add columns to add three different columns in my table. The first column here that I'm adding here is I'm using the function again here called generate series. Generate series, and let me quickly remove this and show this what is happening. So when I enter generate series here, the first value is the starting value, right? So I want this to start from one comma, the end value here is going to be the number of pages or total pages that I want to have in my data set, which is my total pages, followed by a comma. And then it's asking me for the incremental value. And then I'm going to enter one and close the bracket. So this is the generate series from one to let's say if I have 100 rows, then I need to have 10 pages. That is what is being declared over here using the variable, which is total pages, and then the increment of one. So if I change this to two here, I will have two, four, six, eight. I don't want that. I want to have this to be in with the incremental value of one. So I'm entering the value as one here. And then the next column here, the next column name that I have here is minimum. And 
within the minimum column, I'm passing in the value. The value that you see here is basically the output of this particular column that we are creating, generate series. This particular column will be called as value. To explain the value a little bit more in detail, let me quickly copy this piece of code. Come back here in the word that I have and paste this here. All right, so this is the code that I'm using here in the DAX that I have. Let me quickly zoom this in a little. And now I have generate series, right? So what is value here? The generate series is basically, for example, if I type in five, one, five, and one, it produces a single column table like this. One, two, three, four, five, wherein one is my starting number, five is the max number and this is this one here is basically the incremental value how do you want this to be incrementing right now when i use value here in my second example in my second line of code that i have here i have value minus one multiplied by page size plus one so what basically this is doing is that so when you're using value here value minus one into page size plus one you're basically saying that for page one take the minimum where for page one, which is the minimum value is equals to my value here is one, the first row that I have here, one minus one multiplied by the page size. We have the page size defined here, which is 10. So multiplied by 10 and plus one, this will basically return one. And for page two, this will basically become the value here will become two minus one multiplied by 10 plus one. So this will become 11. So this is my minimum value. This is my minimum value for page two. So that was about the minimum value. And then we have the maximum value as well being defined. So for the max value, what I'm doing here is I'm calculating minimum of value multiplied by page size and total rows. Let's look at this in a little bit more in detail. I have my value here multiplied by page size and then total rows, right? My value here, let us say five multiplied by page size. Let us say if it is page size is 10, if it is 50, I'm going to get the value here as 50 and my total number of rows, if I have total rows as 40, the min function here will basically compare both of these two values and only fetch the minimum value here, in this case, 40. This ensures that the max does not go beyond the total number of rows in my fact table. Now let's move on to the next step. The next step here is for us to add the slicer. So let's add a slicer here. I'm going to add the button slicer and bring in the value field into the field here. And you can see that our button slicer is created. We might have to format this a little. So let's head to the format tab. Let's go to the slicer settings. Make sure the single select is on. Let's go to the layout and under layout here, we will display max row as one and the number of columns shown can vary. Maybe we want to display five columns or you want to display 10 columns. You can do that right from here. Let's keep this at five so that we have five pages being displayed and let's turn off the title because we don't want the title to be displayed here. Let's quickly reduce the size of this. We can resize this and also go to the callout values and reduce the size to maybe about eight. And I think that is looking good. And we want the numbers to be appearing here in the center. And now you see that there is a scroll bar that is appearing here. So we might have to make one more change here. So let's go into the layout section and overflow. Let's change this, the overflow style from continuous scroll to paginated. And now you can see that we have the overflow direction as well. You can see that the overflow direction here as it is at the vertical level and we don't want that. Instead, we want this to be horizontal. So let's change the overflow direction here to horizontal so that our icons, the arrows appear here on the right side. And now you can see that I have the report, I have the paginated. And now you can see that our slicer is created. Probably we can go back and increase the number of pages that you want to display here. Let's go back into the layout and let's change this to about eight so that we have eight pages being displayed here. And let's quickly resize this and bring this right over here. And then let's go all the way back to first page. All right, so we are now here on our first page. Let's move this a little down here as well. And now when I click on this, nothing really happens because it is not connected. So now we will have to create a new measure so that our records are being filtered in our table. So to do that, let's quickly go back into our table and create a new measure. So this is the measure that we need to create. So I'm going to call this as filter and I'm going to define a variable here called minimum value. I'm using the selected value function here to identify the minimum value that we have in our table. Likewise, I have a max value variable and I'm using the selected value function again to identify the max value. The max value of that particular row is being assigned to the max value 
variable and the current index selected value here orders index table index column and in my return statement i'm using an if condition here if my current index is greater than equals to minimum value and my current index is less than equals to max value then return one else zero this is basically a boolean condition which will return one or zero based on the values that you have let's quickly close this and now it's time for us to bring us this filter into our table i'm going to drag the filter measure that we just created into this particular visual and say is one and click on apply and that is it we are done and you can see that the first 20 rows are being displayed here let's go back into our table page table if you want to change this i can simply change this to 10 click on apply let's go back into my table here and now you can see that only 10 records are being displayed in my table let's quickly move this above and now when i select two here you will see that records 11 to 20 are being displayed when i select seven you will see records 61 to 70 being displayed so this is how you will be able to create a paginated table in your power bi report this is really helpful especially when you have a large data set that you are dealing with and it's really cumbersome for people to scroll down and take a look at the data but when you create a slicer or a paginated table like this it's really cool i'm sure the users are going to love it so that's it guys in this particular tutorial i hope you enjoyed this tutorial you learned something new today please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials